Welcome back. We are going to finish. Uh, so we were talking about uh, homeostasis. So we're going to use thermoregulation as just an example of different um, uh, of a homeostatic static uh, function. And um, we have talked about um, different types, you know, endotherms versus ectotherms. So that that is uh, maintaining uh, that's in regards to temperature, but also metabolic rate, et cetera. So there is a couple other terms that are associated with um, just the um, temperature regulation. Um, just to make sure, I'm not sure you can see this. I'm ho hoping it's focusing on this. Um, this is poikilotherms. What that means is the temperature of something varies widely. And a homeotherm is they have a stable temperature. So this is roughly like endotherm and ectotherm. Um, but talking specifically about temperature. So the, that's um, just a, a um, terminology that is used oftentimes. Um, now there are, um, with, of course, with endo or poikilotherms um, or uh, larger organisms, or you know, mainly endotherms, um, they, have a, they need longer sustained activity usually because ectotherms are something um, that are going to uh, behaviorally not be as be as active or moving around quite as much. Um, mainly, that has to do with terrestrial life being a predator um, or a prey item that's running from a predator, and um, they will need a lot more fuel and a lot more uh, food, so to speak. So, uh, just comparatively, endotherms are uh, they need more more to maintain what they're doing, whereas ectotherms tend to be a little lower in terms of their activity and that kind of thing. Um, okay, so we're going to talk about uh, one of the ways of maintaining, uh, especially for an ectotherm or, uh, you know, poikilotherm, um, of maintaining their, their heat is by using the environment. So I'm going to put this up on the overhead. So if you're using the environment uh, to help you, um, what you would want to, either, there's basically four components to doing that. You can use radiation from the sunlight, um, that is to warm your body. You can also use conduction from things that are warm, like a rock or something like that, that is warmed by the sun. Um, that's why oftentimes you'll see lizards or something like that on the sidewalk. Um, because they are taking in that heat from the sidewalk. Um, then in terms of cooling yourself down, you can use convection, that is wind or, or air movement. So be out in the uh, open or something like that can help you like reduce your temperature. Uh, that's assuming that you're not being blasted by the sun. Um, and or you can do evaporation. That is, um, if you live in or near water, you can get water on your skin and help you evaporate. You might have seen things like elephants flapping their ears, that is cre creating convection, and they spray themselves with water. So this is a way of cooling down. So this isn't just for ectotherms. So endotherms also can use some of these methods um, to help cool their bodies down or to regulate their temperature. Um, another thing uh, to do is to balance your heat loss um, or the heat that you're producing. So you can do metabolic rate uh, increases to um, increase the heat that you're producing, or you can somehow try to keep your heat from, from uh, going away, all right? So one of the main ways of keeping your heat um, from escaping is something that we call insulation. So insulation is, um, you know, uh, like some kind of layer that is gonna keep the heat inside your body. So we talked about this with birds and we talked about it with mammals. Um, that is that birds have two types of feathers. They have the fluffy feathers that are kind of like an airspace that hold the heat of the body. And then the uh, flat feathers that are on the top that are kind of like the windbreaker. And that is gonna try to, that would basically be like a down jacket, so to speak. And this, uh, literally, 
Um, and in the case of um, mammals, they have fur. So they have, again, two types of fur. Oftentimes, they'll have under fur and they'll have um, the top layer of fur. The top layer of fur being smoother and kind of um, holding the air pockets that are in the under fur that is making it, that's kind of fluffy. Even humans, of course, have an insulative layer. They have, um, ins they, we have, First, sort of, but we also have um, an underlayer of subcutaceous fat. That is fat that is going to be like an, um, insulating our body, especially at the core of our body, so that that maintains our organs at a stable temperature. So those are ways of reducing the amount of heat loss. Now, um, all right, so. Let's compare. Another thing is environment. So the environment is going to um, influence um, your heat loss or the trouble that you have with maintaining your temperature. Um, if you are a, in this case, this, this is an endotherm, river otter and he is uh, it's living in water so to speak you know in and out of water um, but near water and because of that may uh, you know if it was an ectotherm would be having a widely varying temperature but because an endotherm they have to maintain this internal heat so you can see um, that this river otter does that very well it takes a lot of energy for it to maintain this body temperature Whereas a largemouth bass, which is an ectotherm, they do not maintain their internal temperature. Um, they will have their temperature varying widely throughout the day, depending on where they are. Are they in the surface, down below, um, at the beginning of the river, at the end of the river, et cetera, uh, depending on like what, what type of situation they're in. I was thinking it should tuck me, for example, coming directly out of the springs versus down river. A little bit where it might be a little bit warmer so those kind of temperature changes are what a lot of ectotherms will undergo and you can see that causes a wide variation in temperature now one of the things besides insulation that can be used to help um, maintain the temperature is something uh, some some types of circulatory adaptation so let's look at a couple of these so you can see uh, how these go. So I'm going to put these up here. So this is one uh, type of circulatory adaptation. So looking at the Canadian goose. The Canadian goose, of course, is in Canada. Um, and that, that is a fairly cold place and their legs would be in water and sometimes very, very cold water. Um, but they are endotherms and so they want to maintain their bodies as a, um, a very stable temperature. So one of the things that they can do is they can have what they call a countercurrent exchange. And in this case, what is happening is, is that the blood that is coming from the body that is feeding their feet are gonna be in this countercurrent arrangement where the artery, that's the blood coming out, is going to be right next to the vein. So what literally happens is it's very hot up here with this blood coming in. And as you go down, it's getting cooler and cooler and cooler so that the blood flowing back is very cool. But with the countercurrent, what is happening is, is that this blood that is going back is colder than this blood over here. Right? So this blood going back is colder than this over here. So what can happen is the heat gets exchanged to the blood that is returning so that by the time the blood is returning to the body, it is not that different in temperature. So this is called a counter current control. Similar kind of thing is happening in a, um, a whale or porpoise uh, dolphin flipper. Um, that is, they have the blood coming out, and then these countercurrent veins, the veins with the colder blood flowing next to the veins, uh, the arteries with the hotter blood, and that will 
do a heat exchange, allowing the blood returning to be warmer um, than it would be coming from that outside. Okay. Now in the case of a shark, this one, uh, what they are doing is that they have the um, arteries and veins. Uh, so so um, what, they're do, what they're trying to do, well, this is a tune up here. What they're trying to do is they have the outside layers are, are cooler because they're associated with the environment and they only maintain the internal core layer as their warmer layer. So uh, remembering that a tuna is an exotherm. So this is kind of how they would do it. Um, and in the great white shark, shark, what is happening is basically still that counter current because you're having the capillaries, um, are wor the muscles are working and the arteries and, um, and veins are running next to each other and the arteries are maintaining the heat a little bit. The veins are um, returning back and picking up some of the heat but basically the heat is maintained again in the core because the shark is also an ectotherm, all right? So this is kind of what they do. They keep the internal parts and where the, all the organs are and everything warm, but everything else is on the